It's Bob Yeager here. Oh, lots of sun today, right? Uh, so today we're going to do some cast iron prep. Um, it's hunting season for me, and I do a lot of Dutch oven cooking. Plus, we're going to be training the Boy Scouts, uh, the Cub Scout den that my son's in in the spring, uh, to do some Dutch oven cooking. It's a Boy Scout tradition, right? Uh, so we picked up these uh, Lodge Dutch ovens. These ones actually have the Boy Scout logo on them. Um, I'm going to show you in a moment where you can pick up some really nice lodge 12 inch dutch ovens that's basically what we use you, you get bigger than that you're looking at a pretty heavy load um and if you get smaller than that it, it makes it pretty limiting now i always keep two um because well if i'm teaching somebody how to use dutch ovens it's easier to have two um to go back and forth not to mention i might make chicken and dumplings in one and i might make biscuits in the other right um another thing we do is um i keep them in these uh lodge carrying totes um, for Dutch ovens for 12 inch Dutch ovens and the the Dutch ovens typically lodges Dutch ovens typically come with a Cool little Dutch oven cookbook, which I've used plenty of times actually to to make certain things um, I don't typically follow exactly how lodge has their directions for seasoning and things so see these are pre-seasoned Dutch ovens Okay, and what that means to me is uh, they did just enough to keep it from rusting and shipping But as soon as it's sitting out now, I've had these sitting out for about three weeks on my dining room table Okay, and you may not be able to see it too well But they're starting to get a little bit of rust on it right just from sitting in a in the house On the dining room table. All right, and that's it so I'll show you what I've done here. Camera snafu there. So what I do is I, I, on the inside of the Dutch oven, I use refined lard. Um, you can use vegetable oil. You can use uh, Lodge's spray, which is canola oil. You can use flaxseed oil. I find, find that lard works just great. So what I do is I put a healthy coating on the outside and all on the inside. Anything that's cast iron, I put the coating on. Now you can take these handles off if you want to. Um, I just don't because it doesn't really matter but it's as simple as this you just basically get some lard on your hand like this and just rub it around and get it on there real good and then you'll just basically using a cotton cloth you don't want to use paper towel because it'll leave lint all over it like paper towel lint basically but any anything that you can get you get okay so any cast iron part of the surface. Now you want to make sure there's no particulates on the surface of this because you'll literally be baking it in to the sur surface of your cast iron. Get under that handle real good. Now this is a treatment, and the reason I'm showing you this first before we do any cooking or anything later on in another video is because you have to do this all the time. This isn't a one-time shot with Dutch ovens. You're putting a Dutch oven right in the campfire. Um, typically burning the coating pretty good when you're when you're doing your camp cooking and everything uh, but what i want to do is get this coated really really good and then what i'm going to do is just flip it over real quick and this is another cooking surface on the lid i can use this as a skillet in the fire so i want to make sure that's coated really good as well same with the inside of the dutch oven and the outside of the dutch oven now a lot of times your fire is going to burn that that coating off of your Dutch oven pretty good but if you're using this say on your grill or on your stove um, when it's on the stove I just do a light coating on the outside and I sop it clean with a uh, you know uh, a cloth towel or something like that that way it doesn't get all over the place but the ones with legs on them like this are typically for campfires uh, to keep Keep the oven above the fire okay if you get a flat bottom one that's typically for your grill surface or stove top so if you're using a grill on your campfire um, a, grill, a grate then you'd probably want to use a flat dutch oven um, and then what i typically do is since this is a dish it's it's kind of dished it's got a kind of concave to it i'll just take this towel very gently and I'm just wiping off some of the excess. I don't want it to pull on there and create kind of an orange peel type of feel to it. Um, I want things to be able to slide off of here. And the more you cook with your lid top or a cast iron skillet or even a Dutch oven, the more things slide off. Now, the next thing I did, I have my grill set at low heat. Um, this goes about 350. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this in there. Now, another way you can do this is in your oven. You want to place it upside down and put a drip pan underneath it. 
My grill is only big enough on this one side to just do the one Dutch oven, not the lid at the same time. So we're just going to do one at a time. But if you're doing it in your in your oven at home, uh, set it 350 and put it in there for an hour. And every once in a while, open it up, slide it out, and wipe the surfaces off. Um, for Dutch ovens, I don't get overly concerned with that. That's more for like skillets and things, but I don't want big puddles all over the place, okay? And yes, you can cure your Dutch oven or season your Dutch oven in a campfire if you want to. Um, to me, that's just, it's a headache. Um, I'd rather do this prep work at home so when I'm out camping and stuff, I don't have to worry about that. Now, when I'm done cooking in a future video, I'll show you what I do after I'm done cooking. But for right now, let me set up a tripod and I'll show you how I set this on the grill. So I'm just going to take this Dutch oven and I'm going to take it upside down like this and place it in the center of the grill, being mindful not to burn myself. And I do the same thing in my oven with a drip pan underneath. So it's just sitting upside down right on top of the grill like that. And just close it up and leave it cooked for an hour on about 350 to 400 heat. Um, 350 in the oven's pretty good. Grill typically will be sitting at about 400 degrees. Um, and I'll just leave that sit for about an hour. The lid is the same thing. In your oven, you might be able to do both. Uh, you could probably put the lid towards one side and your Dutch oven towards the other side on the bottom, but just make sure you have a drip pan underneath so you don't get all that oil down in there. Then when you pull it out, first let it cool. So after an hour, I'm gonna shut this down. I'm gonna let the whole thing cool for a couple hours. I'm not gonna touch it. Then I'm gonna pull the Dutch oven out once it's cooled because that seasoning process has already taken hold. Um, don't mess with it while it's hot. You can open it up and wipe it off a little bit if you want to, uh, but there's really no need. Just let it cool down, um, and then when you're done, wipe it off. And then you take this, uh, take your carrying bag and put it in there. Now, this is an extended purchase that a lot of people don't understand. Why would you pay 25 bucks for a carrying bag? Well, because Dutch ovens get really, really dirty. They're really greasy, and they tend to get all over the place, get the stuff all over the place. Not to mention, this protects it from getting any moisture on it, so when I put it away after I've reseasoned it and greased it up really good, when I put it away, the grease isn't gonna get anything, but it's not gonna rust, okay? So it's gonna stay nice in this. And it's a nice little carrying pouch for a 12-inch Dutch oven. Now, if you get a regular 12-inch Dutch oven, that's the carrying pouch, you're looking at about 50 bucks, somewhere around there, 50, 60 bucks, okay? Um, if you check out this link here, I'll go through and show you where you can get all this stuff. And I make a little bit of money off of it. Not much, about a buck. <laughs> and uh, that's helps towards new camera equipment and things like that for the channel. Hey there, folks. Bob Yeager here from One Foot in the Wild. Now, if you go to uh, One Foot in the uh, I'm sorry, Amazon.com. It's like this, Amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash One Foot in the Wild. You'll see our influencer shop. Um, Scroll down and you'll find Camp Cookery. And there you can find many selections of things that I use to cook with. I actually own all of these things that I use to cook with for camping type skills. Now, the Dutch ovens have gone up in price. That's not my fault. That's Lodge's fault. Um, they're about 69 bucks. If you click on this picture here, um, I'll even put a heart on it. Whoops, let me go back. <laughs> Click on this picture here, and it'll take you to the link where you can buy that. Um, and that's a 12-inch 8-quart. You can get a bigger one or a smaller one if you want, but 12-inch 8-quart is typically what I would use. Um, it's good for a lot of different things. Then the totes are right here. But simply, if you go to our shop, click on that, it's already at 8-quart. And if you scroll down, frequently bought together, that's the lid stand, and that is the tote. Uh, the only other items I usually get when I'm using, doing Dutch oven cooking are things like a lid lifter. I have a simple one like this. You can get a mechanical one if you want. Um, the lid stand, here's a uh, mesh metal scrubber, and the gloves. The gloves are probably more important than the scrubber to me. These gloves, uh, or a pair of welding gloves, are the best. So a lid lifter, your totes, your Dutch oven, and a set of gloves, and you're usually good to go when it comes to your camp cooking. Uh, your Dutch oven's already gonna come with the Dutch oven cookbook, so you don't really need that. Um, but just go to amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash one foot in the wild. I'll also put the link in the description. And when you buy from here, I make a buck or two, and that helps towards new camera equipment and different production stuff we're doing for one foot in the wild. All right, take care. So like I said, just grease it up really good using vegetable oil, lard. I tend to use lard because I carry that with me anyway when I'm camping. Um, canola oil, uh, flaxseed oil. Flaxseed oil leaves a harder coating and it's a bit stickier. 
I like to stick with lard because it's thinner. It, it really gets down into the pores. Then put it to your oven or your grill at about 350 to 400 degrees, one hour. Turn the Dutch oven upside down in there. Just leave it be. You don't have to check on it or nothing. Now, keep in mind, when you're doing it in the house, you've got this oil and you're baking this thing, it's going to be a little bit smoky, okay? So when you open that oven door, there's going to be some smoke coming out. That's why I tend to do it on a grill outside. Uh, it keeps the smoke out of the house, basically. Um, now, if you're doing this for kitchenware, if you have a, a cast iron Dutch oven that's a flat bottom, you do the same exact process. And then every time you cook in it, when you wash it, um, you know, if anything's sticking to it, put soapy water in it, put it back on the burner, turn it on, get that water boiling, and then take some kind of silicon scraper and scrape off the remaining stuff and scrub it clean. Then oil it, put it back on your stove, let it heat up until it starts to smoke a little bit, then shut it down, wipe it down real good, and you've reseasoned everything. Um, cast iron, not only is it fun and easy to cook with, uh, it makes things taste great. The more you cook on it, the better everything tastes. Uh, I don't know if your mom ever had the old cast iron skillets, but mine did. And um, everything tasted so fantastic in her skillet. And if you cooked it in a different skillet, it didn't taste anywhere near the same. Not to mention, cast iron puts iron in your food. Um, it's not toxic. It actually puts good iron minerals in your food. So you're actually getting a bit of iron when you cook with cast iron. Now, cast aluminum is a different story. Um, is it dangerous to cook with cast alu aluminum? Yes and no. Um, I don't mind plain stamped aluminum. That means like aluminum pots and pans and things like that. I tend to stay away from cast aluminum because if there was ever anything toxic that went into that cast aluminum, it'll likely stay in there. And just like your Dutch oven, you don't want to put anything toxic, any harsh cleaners in there because the cast iron will soak that stuff up. Okay. Cast aluminum does it pretty often. And that's why when people say, hey, should I buy a used one, an old one, and restore it, or should I buy a new one? Well, the new Lodge ones are reasonably comparable to old ones that are all covered in rust. You know, you find an old Lodge or Griswold, somebody's going to charge you $80 to $120 because it's old. Why? It's made of the same stuff. Buy a new one, okay? Get yourself a new one, and you'll have it forever. This is something you'll pass down to your kids. Now, is this something I take on a day hike? No. This is for a fixed camp. This is for a long camping weekend. This is for backyard barbecue and backyard bushcraft type stuff, right? You put a campfire or a, a fire pit in your backyard with your family, and you can do your cooking like that. And it's just fun and traditional. It teaches the kids really good skills. Not to mention, like I said, nothing tastes the same as it does when it's cooked in cast iron. So I hope this little curing process helps you out. Um, I'm going to show a little, I probably already did show a little video overview of our influencer shop where you can get all this stuff. Uh, like I said, it's fairly inexpensive and you're going to have it forever. This is like one of those one-time purchases. I typically have two Dutch ovens and two carrying pouches and those are loaded up in the Land Rover or whatever conveyance I'm using to get to my camp and typically that's a that's a camp fixture for me that's something that's going to be there a lot okay uh, especially if I have my kids or family out there um, the other thing is is like cast iron skillets I'm a big cast iron guy when it comes to fixed camp locations um, stainless steel pots and pans are all fine and good for the primitive camping the bush crafting the tarp and hammock type camping but when you're getting into fixed camp hunting camp type stuff there's nothing better than taking down a dough and getting the back straps and frying it up in a cast iron skillet or making some beans and gravy in a dutch oven with your deer meat your venison your squirrel things like that uh, it's probably one of the best meals you're ever going to have and likely you'll find yourself out in the backyard building a fire doing the same thing more often than not all right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go get yourself a Dutch oven if you don't already have one. Um, and if you find an old one and it's covered in rust, like a family member or somebody has one, hey, sand that thing down real good, blow it all off, wash it up with soap and water, get most of the rust off of it, and then do the oil treatment and the heat seasoning like I just showed you. Do it like three or four times. Even this one I'm probably going to do two or three times, even though it's pre-seasoned, because I want, I want a nice, harder, thicker coating on there. All right. And the more you use it, the better it's going to be. All right. Take care.